Today, I wanna to talk about what real-time kernels are and how they are important to us in which systems we use them and a little bit about how they work. So first off, what is a real-time kernel and how does it differ from a standard kernel, which we find in most of our Linux distributions? Well, for the most part, the three things that really distinguish these two are that a real-time kernel offers low latency, two, it is deterministic, and we'll talk about these terms in a moment. And finally, three, it has predictable or at least consistent response times. So these are the three major things that make up a real-time kernel. Low latency just refers from the time you tell something to execute to the time it takes to actually act on that execution. That's what could be thought of as latency. So it is a very low latent system, which is important as we'll get into for real-time operating systems. Continuing on, deterministic means that it behaves in a way that we understand, whereas modern operating systems and the layers and layers of complexity make things very undeterministic. Finally, predictable response times, meaning we know about how much time things take because we do have a deterministic system. So again, important that it's predictable. And we'll discuss even more why here in a moment. Let's slide things over and talk about this some more. You might be asking yourself, how does a real-time kernel distinguish which tasks are important? That's the actual beauty of a real-time system. You may have a queue of various different tasks that need to be run on your processor. And these tasks can be prioritized. And that's one thing that the Linux real-time kernel offers a priority, meaning you can actually set what task needs to be run in basically which order, and you get to set between zero and 99 as a priority with the higher priority being 99. So if you set a task to run, let's say we had some task, task one, and you set it to 99 priority, and then you had a task two, and you set this to 50 priority, and you had a task three, and you set this to 25 priority, the system will try running this task to completion as much as it can. So in this queue, you'd imagine 99, 50, 25, and any time 99 gets called to be executed, it will try to cut in between these two and preempt them, which we'll talk about in a moment. But really what you need to know is in order for a real-time kernel to work efficiently, it needs to have priorities and it needs to understand which tasks need to be prioritized. And it needs to know what other tasks aren't prioritized so it can actually do those tasks in a methodological order. These are wonderful systems for us. And Linux does offer a real-time preemptible kernel. So there is that term again, preemption or preemptible, which is another way to say if you did have tasks running, let's say you had, again, a scenario where you had a bunch of tasks. We're going to call this task 50, task 25, task one, and then I'm gonna have a rogue task here, task 99. Well, what preemption allows is, let's just call this the CPU, which is running these tasks that are presented by the kernel and executing them. Preemption allows for the CPU to be interrupted while executing these other tasks and letting another task execute when it's a higher priority task before returning to the previous interrupted tasks. So for example, if task 99 wasn't in the queue to be executed and all of a sudden it shows up, it will basically preempt whichever one's currently being worked on. So let's say this is number one being worked on, two being worked on, three worked on, where number one is the current working task. Well, it's going to actually cut through this task and say, no, don't finish doing this one. Put task 99 in, finish processing this one, and then throw task 50 back in. So you can think of that as actually adding a section over here and that's task 99. And then this gets reordered. So one, two, three, four. And now you can see how powerful a preempted real-time kernel is. I will show you some examples of Linux kernels that are real-time, but let's talk about two different types of real-time. There's actually two types. One is a hard real-time kernel, or we can just call it hard real-time. And then there's soft real-time. 
So now you may be asking, what's the difference between these two? Well, let's also discuss this because it is important to understand. Before we do, smash that like button for me if, if you're learning something new. Basically, the soft real time gives some leeway in which a process or task can be ran and the system won't crash or lead to failure if it doesn't process that scheduled task within a certain deadline. So that's the important word here, deadlines. And then if you have a hard real-time kernel, it's the opposite. This one has strict deadlines, meaning the system must process that scheduled task within a certain amount of time. So if there is some time window, we're gonna call that T, and we've designated, let's say, one millisecond for this task, this dotted line here is that one millisecond. If the task takes longer than the millisecond, let's say 1.1 milliseconds, well, that's really bad. We've gained some type of error because this right here is undeterministic and it may be very important that we don't have any error at all. It should have ran exactly here and it did not. Therefore, this task is unreliable and we'll talk about why this is so bad because you might be also wondering why such strict deadlines. Well, let's think about some systems where strict deadlines would be very important, if not could cause extreme issues, flight control systems. So like an autopilot, you would not want that system to have any error in it. Otherwise it might not make the correct decision. And it goes for a lot of these other ones. So like cruise control, you wouldn't want your vehicle accelerating when it doesn't need to be. Medical devices, of course you wouldn't want these to read the wrong thing. Obviously defense systems could have major issues if you have any error in those as well. Even the tiniest bit of error because this adds up. I mean, let's say you were running this millisecond task over and over and over again in a constant loop and you were reading some type of error with it. Well, if that error is off by 0.1 milliseconds, that keeps growing over that 0.1 millisecond every time you run the task. So really most control systems would require the hard real time because they need to meet these very strict deadlines. We can also think about the opposite, right? So soft real time systems. Uh, let's think about PCs. Those are really non-critical. If something fails to run, it probably won't be picked up by the user at all. For example, a pixel color on your screen doesn't get processed properly and you might miss it because it's happening so fast. Or your screen freezes for a moment, then recovers. Not a big deal. Two, a CD or DVD player. How important is it really if this doesn't quite process a task at a certain deadline? Well, everything will still be good. Three, most operating systems. They don't really need to run in a deterministic way. Instead, it actually leverages if they are not running in a deterministic way and can just execute things as fast as possible in parallel because there are many things to process, including graphics, whatever current application you're running, all the background stuff to render things and the background processes that keep your system running. Again, those aren't absolutely important, although it could be annoying because you could receive lag because of it, but having it under a hard real-time system won't necessarily help as well. All right, now that we understand what a real-time kernel is and the difference between hard and soft real-time kernels, let's talk about a couple that exist for us out there. The first one I've used in the past, which is really a framework that works alongside the Linux kernel and can do hard real-time computing called Xenomai. Basically, it creates a pipeline between your Linux kernel and itself. And these two can kind of share information and talk to each other. But this side guarantees you hard real-time features. And the reason I'm men mentioning something like this is because you can also patch the regular or standard Linux kernel to also be preempt or preemptible and real time, but doesn't necessarily guarantee you hard real time. That's actually hard to achieve with a standard Linux kernel, even though lots claim that they can do it. I've definitely had trouble in the past executing it properly. Whereas these two that I'm showing you have pretty much solved all those issues for you. And here's the second one, the RT Linux, which is also a hard real time operating system, RTOS for short and is already a pre-built Linux operating system that has fully preemptive capability and really checks all the boxes in order for you to have a hard real-time system that you do not need to patch that's already patched for you and ready to go. 
an incredible product, especially when you're dealing with control systems, such as the ones that we mentioned before, like the flight, cruise control, medical systems, defense systems, and many, many more. I'm sure people who are working in these industries know to a certain extent what I'm talking about here. Well, there you go. Now you should understand what a real-time kernel is versus the standard kernel. If you do, smash that like button for me, subscribe below, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.